guys, Mike here. I'm in my home studio and I've got a brand new piece of software I want to show you guys. While I'm sitting here waiting for my new code for Maxsoft's RhinoCam 2017, I've got this software I think you guys will really like and good good program to add to your workflow for uh, uh, editing G-code and everything like that. So the program's called Discriminator and you can grab it from cncedit.com. Um, I'm going to switch over to my screen here and we're going to take a look at it. So I got the main window open here. I've actually got one of their sample uh, NC files that they send with it. Um, I've already gone through and actually made uh, all my settings and option changes with it. But overall, the program is is very, very cool. So. Um, starting kind of on the left side here, you've got all your files. Um, it gives you the files based on what I've opened today, yesterday, and older. Um, so there's a real quick and easy way to pick up older files. Um, you can actually switch how they're displayed, name only, full path, short path, name short path. Um, I think this is... Uh, pretty cool. I've gone in and changed the fonts, so if yours looks a little differently, um, don't freak out. You can actually just change the font of your stuff right there. So um, I did my best to make this kind of match the um, brackets um, editor that I use used to use. With um, I set up a whole color scheme for that as well, so I kind of just made my color scheme from that match over to this. So. Um, starting up at the menus here, you've got your typical file menu, edit menu, view menu. Um, this is your color schemes. It comes with green, uh, sample, and white to start. Um, none of which I really liked. They're a little, uh, you know, the it's big. I like to work with a little smaller fonts and everything. Um, and uh, my apologies if everything looks really small to you. Um, I work on a 4K monitor now and uh, I tried my best to upsize to 1080p um, for the video. So if there's any issues, uh, just drop me a line in the comments. Um, so let's go back to the one I created, this applied engineering one. Um, under tools, you've got things like add spaces, remove spaces, operate opens up a mathematical operations tab, which is pretty cool. Uh, you've got renumber, you can renumber your whole uh, the whole thing, if you've got N numbers, um, I don't use them normally. A uh, couple other tools in here, you've got a file comparator. Um, comes bundled with WinDiff that'll actually uh, basically diff two files, uh, which is very cool um, to be able to compare the, uh, um, if you say you had a small change or somebody sent you a file and you needed to uh, check it out and see how it compares to one you already have. Um, a junk filter, a bunch of macro procedures that you can add, um, and ability to have plugins. Um, if we go into options, uh, this is where I sort of set some of the things, and I'll kind of give you an idea of what I've changed already. Um, I s checked this, maximize document window, because I didn't like having multiple windows open inside of other windows. It's my OCD, apparently. Um, Show line numbers. I like the line numbers, but I believe that's already checked. Um, I checked force uppercase. Um, I just I work in all uppercase when I do my G code, um, and I upped it up the large file threshold to fifty thousand bytes over here. Um, and I'll have to reach out to them to see what sort of difference that makes. I have some very 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 large files um, to see, you know, but I have plenty of hardware on this computer to be able to work on it. So. Under schemes, this is where I created this applied engineering scheme. Um, and you have different things you can set your colors and your fonts to. So your document background, the gutter, which is your numbers down the side, uh, bookmark, gutter text, text, text range. And then you get into your actual uh, functions and everything with your CNC. So um, you've got your X positions, your Y positions, your Z positions. Um, this not supposed to say custom it's supposed to actually just say standard text i don't know why it keeps getting changed uh you got your rapid positioning cutting mode uh, for your g01 g02 uh counterclockwise g02 g03 um 
Cutter compensation, G41, 42, and 40. Uh, incremental positioning mode uh, for your G91. Absolute positioning for G90. Um, your comments, which is anything in parentheses. Uh, block skip on, on highlights. Um, and then down in the customs here is the stuff that I've added uh, because I, I do a little more and I have different color setups the way I want it. So um, I have feed rate set to a green, my spindle speed set to a bold and black. Uh, macro variables I set to uh, just sort of a deep red. Um, IJKs I set separate, sequence numbers I set separate. Um, G codes, this was just a kind of a catch all for G codes. Um, I'd set all my G codes to be blue and bolded in the uh, brackets application that I was doing. So I went ahead and just did a blanket G code, did a blanket M code as well uh, for all M codes. And then I set a different color for my uh, rotationals, my A, B, and C axis. Um, and I have the lime green for the program delimiters, which since I work on a Haas, it's got the percent sign at the top and bottom. Uh, tool changes. Uh, so my D, my T, and my H are set to this sky blue. Um, and then my PQRs are set to a, a blue violet. Um, very easily to, to change here. Um, and one really cool feature I, I found when poking around in here was this share button. Um, and I can uncheck only my files and I can hit this button here, refresh from web, and it pulls up all these ones that are, are stored, uh, out there. So I could actually take mine and stick it up in the web for, uh, the rest of you guys to pull down mine, if you'd like to use it. Um, and let me know if you give it a try and, and you like it, just let me know in the comments over here to code navigator. This is where you can actually, um, change your stuff in the code uh, navigator. And I haven't even shown you that yet. Uh, we'll look at that in a second, but you can change different uh, icons in, the, in like a tree format, um, sort of a visual idea. And you have the send to and your menus. So let's back out of here and take a look at this program here. So this is a bolt hole circle pattern um, that uses macros. So essentially right up here at the top, it's got a uh, G65 line um, and it's calling uh, this program over here to be able to push these macros, the Z, uh, D, R, uh, C81, A10, H36, and F10. And so when you come over, the P9010 refers right here to this O uh, 9010 and the bolt hole macro is, is right in here as well. So, um, the sample program has a bunch of, uh, fail safes. If, if something was entered, not entered, um, which just dumps them down here and it gives you a bunch of information of what's what at the bottom. So, uh, if you haven't worked with macros yet, that's very cool. I'm actually going to do an entire video on macros alone. Um, because I just came into the light of using them and, uh, I've been playing with the idea of generically writing a few of the programs I need to write, but using macros so I can go in and make a quick change and, and use it for a couple different parts. So, well, let's dump in, jump into here. So it uses cosine and sine to, uh, um, set up the bolt hole circle instead of using a, a pre predetermined one, um. And one thing I had do notice here is that the COS from cosine and SIN are multiple colors uh, because I did not set a direct cosine sign uh, in my in my color palette. So I'll have to go back and uh, tweak that a little bit. And same with the uh, the go tos and the ends. So it was good to take a look at this to see what changes I may need to make to my um, my color scheme. So let's take a look at the big big reason why. Uh, I like this program. So I found it by searching, uh, for a backplotting program and backplotting is, uh, where you can sort of see in three dimension, what your, the paths that your tools are taking. And I used to use, uh, a free one, um, that was kind of difficult to use and it wasn't all that great. Um, it tracked, tracked well, uh, visual visualizing it, but, um, it was not an editor by any means. So I was forced to use, um, Adobe brackets, uh, and a separate program just to backplot. Um, 
and I do a lot of modifying of my code outside of the cam program. So, um, so one cool, couple cool things we'll talk about is if you come up here and you click this button for plot graphics, it's going to open up this other page right here, uh, other window, and I'm just going to drag it, make it a little bigger. And you've got your top view, your isometric, your right view, and your front view. I'm sorry, front view and right view um, of everything that it's doing. And you can come in and you can actually take your right mouse button and pan um, each of them. Move each one around and, and pan. Um, you can actually use your middle mouse button in this one to to orbit around that center axis right there and your scroll button uh, zooms in and out so it's very very similar to most applications and similar to rhino that that we work in a lot in these videos so um and it's live updating which i think is one of the coolest parts about this so if we come over here and we look at a uh find out what how many bolt holes uh, we're actually looking for. And we are, let's see, where was it? I was playing with this earlier. So H is the number of holes to drill. And then we come up to the top and this has 36 holes. So if I come up here and actually put in 10 holes, it updates automatically over in the bolt hole circle and I can change it to 16 and it's gonna update over here automatically. And that to me is something that's very, very cool because if I'm just modifying slightly on the code, I can see a visual uh, representation of what, what is going on. So a um, couple other cool things you can do. Uh, if you right click up in here, uh, you can select them. You can, I can set it to fit. Um, I can check pan, rotate, zoom, or I can come into my views and, and reset them that way. So like if I mess up this one over here, I can right click, go to views and go to isometric and it's gonna put me right back in that isometric view. The other cool thing, you can, I can actually print right out of here. Um, I can change my back colors. Uh, it actually comes with a blue um, and I changed it down to a back background so I can kind of see everything a little better. Um, can save it out to a DXF. There's all kinds of cool things you can do across here. Like if you hit show player, um, you can actually come in and hit play. Let's see if I can get it to do it. It's going to go through and tick through each of the each of the pieces. And I believe this slider is our speed. There it goes. So I'm still kind of learning this program too, but I didn't want to wait to uh, show you guys because I think it's a, a great application. Um, and it'll keep repeating like that. So like I said, you can come in here, you can change this. Another cool feature is if you come over here and click uh, plot graphics with quick viewer, it's just gonna throw up a single window uh, right there. So it's gonna do the same thing. I can come in here, change my holes, back to 36, uh, it's gonna go ahead and update this automatically. And this function is just like that that other window, the same menu system and everything. So let's jump over here. I wanna show you the, uh, okay, so if we, sorry about that, I just cut, cut this video because I was trying to figure out why it wasn't showing us in this tree here. So what I ended up, it wasn't in that because of the extensive use of macros, um, but I wanted to show you the little tree here. Um, and it shows like your rapid, and it'll actually highlight what's rapid uh, movement, uh, cutting movement, cutting. Um, and this part's not perfect because this is everything you can come in and, and alter in the code navigator. Um, and it, you can set what each thing is, is actually showing. And this show is exactly uh, what it is. If I go name only, it's going to show tool change. Um, and if I click tool change here, it shows where it is. Rapid again, rotary, 
Um, and it, and it's a quick uh, sort of high level view of the um, operations that are going on in there. So um, one other awesome thing about this program is the snippets area. And you can come in and pull up and add snippets. Um, so here's like a sub return down there, um, M98. Like if you can't remember what a certain uh, call does, you can add it. I can add a group, a new folder. Um, you know, something that I use a lot if, if I go back and open one of my fourth axis files. And, uh, you know, something I use a lot uh, is you know, let's say I want this opening line for my Haas right here. Um, I can copy that. I'm going to create a new snippet. And I'm going to paste that down here. Oops, I keep pasting it up here. I guess I won't. I guess I can't paste. So if I type it in. G40, G49, G80. And that is, we call, let's say we want to call that uh, program start. Create a new file. I can drag it right over and it sticks it in there. And that's really, really nice about the snippets. So. Um, I'm going to have to reach out to the developers about that because uh, there's also a button down here to insert the snippet. Um, you can change your fonts and everything for down here, and that's that's fine and dandy for being able to read down here and everything. And for instance, you know, you come into the stop, it still only sticks it in the way my scheme looks, but um, you know, it doesn't need to be that big. It's nice to have longer snippets if you're if you're doing stuff. But um, if I right click down here, right click does nothing, and paste does nothing in there as well. So uh, I think that should be something they should uh, look into is uh, being able to paste there. So here's your bookmarks. Uh, if you need to bookmark a certain part of the file, and then um, Here's some of your macros as well, if you want to record a macro. Um, and I need to look into this program some more. Um, but for now, as a basic editor and a, and a backplot uh, program, uh, I, uh, I think it's a great program. Uh, if we back out to the, you know, this arc test here and we just pop out the, the plot graphics, it shows the, the arcs and everything. Um, really is an extremely useful program. And uh, once again, the website is uh, cncedit.com. And it'll bring us right to uh, the discriminator CNC editor. And uh, for the price, uh, it's hard to beat. 60, 65 bucks. Uh, the program works great. Um, it's I reached out to them before I even got it to... Uh, see what um how often they update it and it's important to me like i, I don't want to purchase into a program that may be dead and uh, i know you see a lot of that across uh this industry so um they got right back to me and uh, i think it's great this program overall so um i encourage you to give it a try uh there's a trial um i actually haven't even bought my license for this one yet but i wanted to evaluate it see how i liked it and i think i'm going to stick with it um if anything, having a back plotter for 65 bucks is, is hard to beat. So um, check them out. Tell them you, uh, we sent you from Applied Engineering and Design YouTube channel. And uh, hopefully it can help you guys out. So, um, you know, thanks for, thanks for watching this quick short video. And uh, check out that program. And we'll be doing a new video on uh, Mechsoft's 2017 software and what, what came out with that. Um, as well as our uh, Space Mouse that came in. So we'll be doing an unboxing video on that shortly as well. So uh, make sure you guys punch that like button and subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next video. Thanks.